Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 621. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 615 to 622. Hey, let me minimize that and then make this a little bit bigger. Alt W G is zooms to selection in 2000 and. 7 and 10. Now our goal here is we have some criteria. In our last video 20 we did counting unique items. So um, uh, if I put sales rep 2 here, I want to get a count of unique numbers and uh, given for the sales rep 2. And we have two formulas here, but that's not what this video This video is about the conditional formatting. So there's two criteria here. It's got a conditional formatting has to look down this column and find all the SR2s, because that's what's in the cell. And it has to go down this column and say, 2, 4, uh-oh, duplicate, that's not unique, so don't highlight it. That's two, the two things that have to be true for the row to be highlighted. Oh, that's a third aspect of this too. Highlighting a row with uh, multiple criteria is also a trick in itself. You have to know mixed cell reference. But the really tricky part is this unique uh, number part of it. Change this back to 1, and then it should do that. Now I'm going to get rid of the formatting, Alt-O-D, Alt-D. OK. All right, now, this is going to be a, uh, not an array formula, but uh, have a bunch of parts in it um, um, that may be hard to do in the dialog box. Because to do conditional formatting with a true-false formula, you need to open up the dialog box. So whenever I get to this situation, it's a hard true-false formula. True-false formulas are called logical formulas. I build it in the cell first, copy it over and down, and then see if I get my trues, trues for for every row that needs to be. And when I get the formula right, then I copy it and paste it in the dialog box. There's two things that have to be true, so we're going to have to use the AND function. Logical test 1, logical test 2. Only when they're both true will AND deliver a true to the cell. No problem. The first one's pretty easy. i got to, in this column, know when uh, anything in this column is equal to that. But watch this. It's as if this AND is starting over here. So this cell and this cell needs to be looking at that. So I'm going to have to lock it using the F4 key. I tapped it three times. The column has to be locked. Because remember, this AND is going to be in memory here. And in the cells, I'm going to copy it over here. I need a true and a true asking of this. So the column is locked. But when I go down to the next row, it's got to look at that one. I have to say, is that equal to this? And that's locked in all directions. That's the first logical test. Now, next part is uh, some way of counting unique numbers. Um, so we're going to use count ifs. So this solution only works in 2000 and 7 and 10. Well, the criteria range. Now, let's think about this. We're going to uh, a unique count for numbers. Well, here I want to just count this, and then here count this. But when I get down to here, I somehow need the range to expand. So when it gets down here, count if I'll say how many 12s are there. There's two of them. So I'm going to click in this cell right here, and then Shift colon. Actually, someone just told me a trick the other day. I'm going to click there and then tap the period key. Period puts the colon and the next A5. I wish I could remember who told me that, but I don't, I don't remember uh, some smart person at YouTube. Uh, now, think about this. Again, this is in a cell. It needs to be copied over here. So this one needs to be locked. I hit F5. This one needs to be locked right here in all directions, because I only want it starting here. When I move over here, I don't want it to, to move to expand the range this way. But this one, think about this. When I move her over this direction, it needs to be locked. But when I move down, it can't be locked, because now I need to include the 2 and then the 3 as I move down. So this one needs to be locked just in front of the column reference. That's the criteria range. It's an expandable range in only one direction, comma, and then um, I'm counting what? I'm counting this. Now, this needs to also be locked only with the column, so I hit my F4 key three times. Now, there's a second um, a criteria for the count ifs, because notice um, I get a 1 here, a 2, and a 3. If I was just counting 
the numbers, but I need to also incorporate um, the SR1 in case there was a 12 for an SR2. So no problem, I just do a second criteria range and I'm going to use the same idea. I'm clicking there, I'm going to use that period trick, I love that trick, brand new trick. I'm going to lock this one, F4, lock it all directions, and this one, one, two, three times. That's the uh, criteria range, comma, and then the criteria two is this one. Again, this one needs to be, sorry, the criteria is this one right here. No, uh, yeah, this one, F4 in all directions. Because the count ifs need to uh, know, is this in this expandable range, is that equal to that whatever's up there? Not uh, like this, this other, uh, one right here. I didn't say that clearly. It just needs to know, is it SR1? All right, now we close parentheses. Now, right now, this count ifs, and I should actually copy this um, and suspend this and show you what it's actually doing, equals this. If I copy this down right here, see how I get, um, it's right here, it gets a zero every time it sees an SR2. But now look at this. This is one, this is two, this is three for SR112. I really want these to come out as zeros too. So the count ifs part of it, we convert it to a true and false uh, equals one. And now we've converted it when we double click and uh, send it down. It's only going to, when it sees a unique number and SR1, is it going to say true. Here's a SR1 and a unique number. But when it gets down to these duplicates down here, forget it. So now we're going to, um, I'll just delete this. Come back here and um, unsuspend it by getting rid of the space. So I have to just say, hey, is that equal to 1? And there we have it. That's a uh, true-false formula that will conditionally format the rows only when it's SR1 and a unique number. Control Enter. I'm going to drag it over. Remember, the idea is you do a complicated one in the cells. Verify for the first couple ones if it's a huge data set. Uh, there's a true there, and sure enough, there's a bunch of falses. This gets a true also. So now, the trick is, you got your formula, you scoop it out in essence, because I'm going to copy in edit mode, escape, and then come over here and highlight. The active cell is right there, because just as we copied it over and down, it'll copy over and down in memory. Alt-O-D for conditional formatting, new rules, use a formula. Text box in earlier versions, Alt-O-D works also. Oh, well, this trick won't work in earlier versions because I used count ifs. I'm going to control V. Um, make sure it's, it's there. Format, and then add whatever color you want. Maybe a green and a font color white or something. Click OK, click OK, click OK, and sure enough. Now if I test it, you always got to test it. Right, and um, so there you go, conditional formatting with uh, two criteria, but one of them was the hard one, unique number in a column. All right, we'll see you next trick.